Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our live broadcast on Safe Cities. I trust that you are well, that you have been keeping safe, and that you are flourishing in the manifest presence of Jesus Christ. Let's just pray before we start this evening. We worship you, Almighty God. We thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that your word declares that him will have an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the church. I pray today, Father, that my mouth will be your mouthpiece, Lord, that you will speak through me. We thank you, Father, that you give us intelligent hearing, ears to hear what your spirit is saying to the church. Let uh, the seed not go wasted, Father, but let it germinate in our hearts. I pray, Father, that it will bear much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I trust that you are well, that you're keeping safe. And um, we indeed missing our fellowship together, but this is the new normal and this is the way forward that the Lord has um, instructed us, um, at least until further notice. Well, so far we have been discussing from the beginning of this year, we've been speaking about perfect love. We've been studying uh, the Song of Solomon um, in our pursuit to discover the keys to perfect love. And the reason for discovering these keys is that perfect love, the Bible says perfect love, cast out all fear. Now, at the moment, we are landing on a Song of Solomon 2, verse 4, and the Shunammite woman says, um, your banner over me is love. She speaks to uh, her beloved, and she says that his banner over me is love love and we've been examining the meaning of the banner and I said to you that the word banner actually means standard there is a standard that God has given us that standard is called agape love so by the time you get to that standard when you're a born again believer that standard is automatically installed inside of you you don't need to learn how to love unconditionally God has given it to you it is a fruit of the spirit it is the first fruit of the spirit. Out of love flows every other fruit. Every gift flows out of love because love is a person. The Bible says that God is love. And Jesus is um, the example of perfect love. So because of that love that has been given to you, um, it has been shed abroad in our hearts. God has invested it in, and deposited inside of you um you don't have a choice you are known by that kind of love so you don't have a choice to act on that love now that love will give you advantage unfair advantage in the world today it is a different operating system it is not the operating system of the world and we will discuss some of it today the world gives you a different operating system the operating system of God is opposite. The Bible says that the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. So um, when we listen to the voice of God, we begin to understand his principles of perfect love in our lives. Again, welcome to all of those who have just uh, tuned in on our Facebook page and I'm still trying to get our live broadcasting on our YouTube page to work for some reason. Um, I have not given access to, to get it activated. And I hope that by the next time we meet that our live stream will also be taking place on our YouTube page. For now, please, be, please bear with me. And I hope that you will go straight to like this video and also go and share and post it. Also, please do interact in this meeting. Since, uh, write some posts, um, introduce yourself, reveal your presence. That's important because we're not seeing one another face to face. It's good for me to know that you are in this meeting today. And then also um, it's important for you to interact um, discussing the word as we go along. If, you, if it's the first time that you visit this page, please do introduce yourself, message me, inbox us, and we will interact with you. So let's get straight into the word today. Uh, the last time we spoke about fear, 
we're busy dealing with a fear factor. And I say to you that the Shulamite woman says, his love or his banner over me is love. So the standard that he has set is love. And I say to you that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up that standard, which is love against him. So I said to you that I'm going to pause here for a while. While we're studying the standard called love, um, the, the reason for us studying perfect love is because love casts out all fear. Now, the world is governed by fear today. I think fear is the greatest, or, or let's say anxiety, which leads to depression and many other diseases, as I mentioned in the last session. Um, those uh, fear or, or anxiety is the leading disease today. Now, that comes as no surprise for us. As the sons of God, we know who the instigator of fear in our life is. So perfect love will cast out fear. The fear in every form of life, fear in your marriage, fear in your relationship with the Lord, fear in your relationship, your covenant in, in, in your local church or your spiritual family, whatever fears you are having will be sorted out when that standard or that banner begins to operate in your life. Now, I say to you that for the sake of this uh, short series that I started, The Fear Factor, um, I'm going to divide fears into three different categories. The first category we've dealt with last week, which is the fear of loss of provision, the fear of loss of provision. Then the second one is the fear of the loss of protection. In other words, death, trauma, or anything that could cause harm to you. The fear of loss of protection. And the third one is the fear of loss of posterity or, uh, the, fail, or uh, the fear of failure or the fear of insignificance. So those are the three things that we are going to discuss. And um, these fears are tormentors. The Bible says in 1 John 4, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Verse 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. So, there are so many keys and so many things to deal with in this scripture, but I want to focus on this one part. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. And it, and it says fear involves torment. So some of you have been tormented. These fears are your tormentors. Okay, so you can blame the devil and yes, he is the instigator of fears, but these are your tormentors and perfect love will make you fearless. Now, I want to start off by saying to you that Satan always presents a counterfeit. The enemy comes to present a counterfeit. He did this from the beginning. This is why Jesus said he called him a liar and he called him a murderer from the beginning. He lied to Adam and Eve stating that if they eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that they will be like God. Now, that was a counterfeit. God already created Adam and Eve in the image and likeness of God. And then he instructed them to eat from every tree in the garden except from that tree. Satan comes with a different solution. He comes with a counterfeit. He sugarcoats it. He makes it look attractive to you. And so, instead of you overcoming your fear, you are developing that anxiety and fear in your life. The end result is fear. So, all of his solutions are counterfeits. Now, don't just look at Satan as spirit. They are people who are messengers of Satan. 
Uh, Jesus even spoke to the Pharisees and he said that they uh, are those who preach the word who are messengers of Satan. So I submit to you that there are even pastors today who present counterfeits, solutions that are counterfeits. And the world cannot produce solutions to our problems. To overcome lack, Satan's solution or the devil's solution was to turn stones to bread. Stones, as you know, represents people. The Bible says that we are living stones. So the world will abuse people to overcome lack. This is what we already see taking place, even in the marketplace, even in government, even in, um, in the workplace today. We see that people are tramping on others. They're turning stones to bread. In other words, you are using another man, another human being for your own provision. So uh, that is turning stones to bread. <clears throat> but Jesus has a different operating system. Jesus said to overcome the fear of lack. He says, you will overcome it by declaring man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the principle there is that if you celebrate the word that proceeds from the mouth of God, and remember the mouth of God is the preacher. How would they hear if there is no preacher? And how would they preach if they're not sent? So the mouth of God is the preacher. God doesn't have a mouth. Okay, God is spirit. His mouth are those who are preaching. And the principle is that if you celebrate the proceeding word of God coming from the one who is sent with your substance, you will enjoy supernatural provision. And I've given you the examples for that. Now, the second fear, and I may not complete this this evening um, as I'm still trying, uh, busy processing it myself, but the second fear to overcome is the fear of the loss of protection. And there are many fears, the world term them as aerophobia, uh, uh, the fear of flying, arachnophobia, the fear of spiders, astrophobia, the fear of thunder and lightning, uh, claustrophobia, the fear of uh, confined or crowded spaces, hemophobia, the fear of blood or the fear of water, hydrophobia, um, there's so many others, zoophobia, the fear of animals, and maybe one of the greatest that we can discuss today is autophobia, the fear of burglars, fear of strangers, fear of sudden illness, and, and there's um, a more definition to that, but that's where I want to leave it. So these fears are real. I remember the first time that I uh, went into Europe and I had to walk down a very dark alley at midnight because I couldn't control what time my flight arrives and the way that arrangements were made were such that I would walk down a very dark alley with my luggage. And fear gripped my heart. I wasn't alone. I was with somebody. And both of us were absolutely fearful because it was dark. There were strangers around. These were refugees, Romanian refugees. And they looked to us like homeless. They were homeless people living on the street. And because of, our, because of where we come from, we thought that we were going to be mugged. We thought that we were going to be attacked. We thought that we we're going to be robbed and fear grip our hearts. So fear is a reality. We fear because we are not sons, but we can uh, create that fear in our own lives. And it's important that we use wisdom to understand how fear begins to operate in our lives. We install security systems in our homes because we fear the lack of protection. And even though we believe in God's divine protection, we still 
install security uh, systems because there is a level of wisdom that God has given to the world. That is secondary grace. There's primary grace, which comes from the divine protection of God, but there's also secondary grace or secular grace. And we cannot deny healing that comes from medical doctors or from medical science and medicine. We also cannot deny protection that comes from the wisdom of the world. So I'm not saying that we do not believe in the wisdom of the world, that we're not going to follow it, but there is a primary method. And the primary method is um, the divine protection of God. Now, when I speak about using the systems of the world, those systems that are good, even the medical science, those are also classified as the wisdom of God. It is God who gave them witty inventions. It is God who gave, um, it's God who invented science. God is the author of medical science and, and medicine, which produce many miracles in the world today. So when I speak about the wisdom of the world, I'm speaking about foolishness, like turning stones into bread. I hope you're getting me today. So just drop down there on Facebook. Uh, um, if you have clarity, please uh, let us discuss this issue today. So Jesus showed us the example of overcoming this fear, the fear of the lack of protection. And you may follow with me in the Bible from Matthew 4, Matthew 4 verses 5 to 7. Matthew 4 verses 5 to 7. The devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. So again, we see here. Satan presents a counterfeit by suggesting that we tempt God. Jesus didn't slip and fall down the mountain. Satan wants him to tempt God. In other words, he wants him to prove that he is a son. You don't have to prove to anybody that you are a son. That is a different operating system. Now, God is not giving you the spirit of fear. Throwing yourself down the mountain is a spirit of fear. But love, power, and a sound mind. In other words, you're not going to do stupid, foolish things. A sound mind means that you have wisdom. You know what to do. And I'm going to come back to that if I remember. So he, he presents a counterfeit by suggesting that we tempt God. And Jesus quoted the law and said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And that's in Deuteronomy 6. He said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Satan used the word to entice him. Look at what a good preacher he is. He quoted the Bible. Again, Jesus said, that they are preachers who are sons of the devil. They are preaching from Satan's resources. They have a resource center. Some of them even call it an apostolic resource center. They have sons. Jesus said to the Pharisee, you travel land and sea. You go to the nations just to make a disciple. to create them in their own image, to reproduce themselves. And they are good preachers. They know the scriptures very well. Look at Satan, how well he knows the Bible. He says, isn't it written? He shall give his angels charge over you. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. 
He's quoting from Psalm 91. Now, how many people do you see quoting from Psalm 91? You go into a Christian's home, there is Psalm 91 on the doorpost. You drive behind a Christian, this car is protected by Psalm 91. You go into certain churches, everybody preaches and prays Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is very popular. Even the unbeliever can quote Psalm 91 because it speaks about divine protection. It speaks about angels who will uh, carry you and bear you up in their hands. Now, let's look at Psalm 91. Psalm 91. There are promises of protection. Verse 2, he says, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. In other words, COVID will not even come near you. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Wow, amazing promises of protection, divine promises of protection. These people who quote Psalm 91 have never even um, discovered or experienced such divine protection. So what are we saying? Is the Bible not true? Why are we not experience, or, or experiencing this, this great, miraculous, divine, supernatural protection? Yet it's possible because we are living in the presence of God. His word is living and powerful. We should experience the supernatural every day. So these are amazing promises of protection. But this protection materializes because of perfect love. Look at verse 14. It is the qualification to walk in that kind of protection. We all want that protection. You sleep with a knife under your bed. You sleep with a, a firearm under your pillow. You drive around with, a, um, with pepper spray or walk around with pepper spray. We have so many things that we install in our lives for protection. And yes, again, don't be foolish. You should protect yourself but we have forgotten about divine protection. We forgot to trust in him for divine protection. Look at verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. The Bible says, if anyone does not love Christ, let him be accursed. Now, God doesn't curse people. You curse yourself because if you don't love him, you're not walking in the supernatural realm that you should be walking in. So God is not in the cursing business. We curse ourselves because we are disobedient. He said, because he has set his love upon me, I will set him on high because he has known my name. I don't have time to discuss all of that this evening, right? If you have questions, please ask them there on um, our Facebook comments and we will revert to you. It says in verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Wow, God will honor you. 
And he says with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What amazing promises of protection. And the reason for that protection is you have set your love upon him. That is perfect love. Because you walk in love, because you love him. Remember the keys of love. If you love him, you will love your neighbor. If you love him, you will obey his commandments. If you love him, you will not love the things of the world. If you love him, you will make sacrifices. If you love him, you will express that love physically. Now, if you love him, he will protect you and your family. Now, coming back to our topic in terms of the Song of Solomon and perfect love, the issue of marriage. These three fears that I'm dealing with are the greatest fears of a husband, the greatest fears of a man, that he will not be able to provide these three things to his wife and his family. The first thing is provision, that he will not be able to provide to put food on the table. I want to say to you, if you love the word of God and you honor the one that is sent, there will always be food on your table. Not only provision in what is needed, but prosperity, abundance. Secondly, the second fear of any man is that he will not be able to protect his family or protect his, his wife and his family. And again, you do not have to fear because if you set your love upon God and do what is right, you will have divine protection. You see, you can cause a curse to operate in your life. The Bible says, if you break the hedge, Satan will come in and bite you. The serpent will come in and bite you. So the curses operate in our life because we create them. We open the door for the enemy to come in. But if you set your love upon him and follow all these principles, you will not be disappointed. God will divinely protect you. And I want to say to you, those of you who are sons of God, you don't even know that you walk in God's divine protection. You are complaining because the traffic was delayed, but you didn't know that you were going to be in an accident. And so we walk in ungratefulness because we do not understand how God's mantle of protection operates in our life on a daily basis. So divine protection is a result of setting your love upon him. That's how perfect love casts out fear, the fear of the lack of protection. Now look at verse 1 of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God has a secret. And I want to say to you, 99% of the church has not discovered this secret. The secret place. The secret place. The Bible says in Psalm 25, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. Not fear the devil, not fear man, but fear him. We don't fear him because we need to be scared of him. We reverence him. We honor him. We fear the devastating consequences if we would be separated from our God. So God has a secret, the secret to divine protection. Now he has a shadow. You shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. He who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the almighty now you already know the secret place is kingdom culture for those of you who've been walking with me for a long time i'm not going to bore you with that this evening you can go and revisit that 
for those of you who have not heard about the kingdom culture, you can inbox me. We will speak about it again over and over. I'm not going to deal with kingdom culture today. We'll get back to that. But he speaks here about abiding under the shadow. What is the shadow of the Almighty? God is our heavenly father. He is the almighty. But we have earthly fathers. In, in the business world, when you learn someone's work, you are, they call it shadowing. You're shadowing the person. In other words, you become a second in charge. You learn how to do that person's work. Okay, You're a main, uh, you have a mentor. You may be called an intern um, or whatever. There's this many other uh, words for it but you are a shadow of that person. So you're going to be shadowing the person. You're going to walk alongside and learn how to do it. Now, spiritual fathers are shadows of the almighty. Your spiritual father represent Christ. And yes, Christ is almighty. The Bible says he shall be called a counselor, a wonderful counselor, mighty God everlasting father so he is almighty we know that jesus is almighty he is god so god is our he heavenly father your spiritual father represents christ like paul represented christ to timothy the apostles represented christ jesus said i sent you as he has sent me i sent you so when you Receive your spiritual father, you are receiving Christ. Are we together in that? I hope you agree with me on this point. Please um, state your, your case there on a Facebook comment. I would appreciate your feedback. So we have earthly fathers and your spiritual father is a shadow of the father. So what is the purpose of a spiritual father? A spiritual father must point you to the heavenly father. Now in um, Matthew 23, Jesus said, you only have one father. Do not call any man father. He was speaking there about Abba. Do not call any man Abba. Like um, they would, they would uh, say in those days, they would call the priest sitting in the temple, they would call him Abba. And today you still hear that. The father or the pope, that's where the word pope comes from. He presents himself as the father, as Abba God, that he's above the word of God. There's no man that's above the word of God. There's only one heavenly father. But at the same time, we know that Paul called Timothy his son. He called Titus his son. He called Onesimus his son. And we see many other examples of sonship in the Bible. So Jesus wasn't against fathers, spiritual fathers. He was against those who present himself as the heavenly father. Your spiritual father is a shadow of almighty father. Your spiritual father is not the main thing. Your spiritual father is there to teach you the word to point you to the Father. Protection is firstly from the Father. It is God who protects us. He's your shield. He is your protection. Amen. And there's many scriptures and you can, maybe I can give you an exercise to do today. I didn't go and pull out all the protection scriptures. You go and pull them out and post them here. All the scriptures with God promised his divine protection. It's all summarized in Psalm 91. So protection is from the heavenly father, but it's intensified when you are under the mantle of a spiritual father. Now listen to this. Isaiah 32 says, a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. God said, 
there is a man that I have appointed for you who is going to be a hiding place for you. You're going to find your protection in that man. And when he says man, for heaven's sake, he's not speaking about male. Man is ma male. I mean, man uh, includes male and female. So God could appoint a woman who becomes your spiritual father the word father comes from the word pater which means nourisher so we're not talking about a biological father we're talking about a spiritual father a nourisher one who gives you the word of god so not only does the word your provision flow from honoring your spiritual father but also protection Samuel conferred this kind of protective mantle upon the nation of Israel. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 7, the Philistines were subdued. They did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. So as long as Samuel was alive, God protected them from the Philistine. Divine protection because of a man that God has appointed. Paul's presence in Ephesus kept the wolves away. Acts 20 verses 28 and 29. It says, therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. There's the fathers, overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock. He's talking about those who are wolves in sheep clothing. They are coming to destroy, to devour the flock. They have evil philosophies, evil doctrines, false doctrines, false news. And their intention is to destroy, to disunify the flock of God. So, Satan presents a counterfeit. He says, you tell me that you are protected, throw yourself down the mountain. In other words, you don't need a hiding place. You don't need a spiritual father. Now, very quickly, I'm almost done. I want to come back to, to what I said I'll come back to early, uh, earlier on, the wisdom of the world. and we see that people walk with a vacuum inside of them. They walk with this desire to feel protection, a sense of protection. So they will begin to um, engage in all kinds of um, outrageous sports, all kinds of um, uh, outrageous, activities, right? Exhilarating adventure sport, activities that, that causes a risk or that presents a risk to you, like bungee jumping. And there's many other examples. I'm not gonna mention all of them now. And maybe you can just mention them down. Just comment there on uh, the Facebook comments, mention them down. There are many risks that people are taking today, like they want to climb to the highest pinnacle, the highest mountain. They want to swim in the deepest sea. Yes, there's things that we should discover as the sons of God, but it can also be very dangerous. Now, we fly in airplanes, although there's a risk attached to it, because we are going to preach the gospel of the kingdom. There is a purpose for us to do that. And that has become the norm today, the method of transport. But there are outrageous things that people are doing. They are taking certain risks just for the pleasure of it. And then there are people in the church taking risks because they want to prove God's protection. For instance, giving someone snakes to eat or spiders to eat or poison to drink. And you know that there are many 
scams, Nigerian scams and all kinds of scams where preachers come into the church and make you do things that are dangerous. And then say that God is going to protect you. These people are not operating with the spirit of God. They're presenting a different spirit, a foreign spirit. They are filled with demons. Often you'll see that they hypnotize the people. They present a counterfeit. Why would you want to do something that, that is risky, that may cost you your life? Over 480 people die every year because of bungee jumping. And I'm just picking on bungee jumping today, but there's far more um, outrageous things that people do. Why would you want to take such a risk if it would cost your life? If you fall down there and break your neck, don't pray and ask God for healing. What business did you have doing something so foolish? Why didn't you spend that time Connecting to a spiritual father, studying the word of God, preaching the gospel, mentoring someone in the kingdom of God, discipling someone. Spend time testifying, spend time with your family, love your wife and your children. Spend quality time together. Instead of doing foolish things. And then ask God for his protection. I know people who ask God for his protection. They want to go climb the highest mountain and they got very ill and even died. So don't use the wisdom of the world. This is a counterfeit. Satan presented this counterfeit. He said, throw yourself down the mountain and God will charge the angels over you. Now let us walk in wisdom today. Go and study and meditate on scriptures of protection. God is your protector. And while we are walking in the spirit and in the word, let us walk in wisdom and understand how God's protection operates. There, there are principles for protection, just like there are principles for provision. And I want you to walk in full protection, putting on the full armor of God, which is Christ. Every aspect of the armor, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the, the shoes of the gospel of peace, every single part of that armor of God points to Christ. He is your salvation. He is the spirit. He is your peace. He is faith. So let us rather walk in the word of God and enjoy divine protection. You do not have to fear. Do not fear what man can do to you. Do not fear he who cannot touch the spirit. He can only touch the flesh. And there's many scriptures saying, do not fear. Jesus said, fear not little flock. It's your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom divine protection comes from god and i want to say to you if you operate in the shadow of the almighty you will experience and enjoy all these principles or all these benefits in psalm 91 I pray that you will go and meditate on this and we will, we will prosecute this matter further when I meet with you again. Go well in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye.